All right, welcome everyone to the weekly ecosystem call. I'm your host, Cryptocorn. I'm going to be taking up the call for the first few minutes. Uh, unfortunately, I have to head to the airport. So Steve is very kind. Now, uh, Knight of the Roundtable, uh, Fred, to give us some protocol and gateway updates. Sure, I'll bang down the list quickly here from the Grove update side. Um, first off, we uh, just finished kind of the last weeks to launching our new pricing in the portal. So that is done. That is live. Uh, it is two dollars per million. This isn't an ad. Uh, we're just we're proud of it, and we're happy that this feature is out the door. So this has been a big thing. Um, moving down the list, uh, path, uh, open source is, uh, we are hoping to open source by the end of this week and have code in the repo. Um, and next week we are looking to have some tooling and documentation for a very basic deployment. So the pre alpha version of path is coming. Um, I'm going to keep sliding down. Lastly is Shannon. Um, we are looking to, uh, execute the permissionless demand load testing. Um, tools, implementation, and fixes should be done by the end of this week. We're looking to merge everything in by the end of next week, and then that should be followed by a, uh, a blog post. Um, so uh, further down the line, coming up next, is the slashing of suppliers and then documenting all of the above, all the work that's been done, and um, the permissionless demand, slashing of suppliers, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, stay tuned, as always, to the Shannon repo uh, if you're following along. That's it. Very cool. It's always nice to see when the product's shipping. And we're sticking to, to deadlines. Very nice, very nice. Okay, next is Gateways. Uh, Sasquatch or uh, Ramiro? Uh, either you would like to take the floor and uh, give us some any updates on, on Gateways, please. Um, I'm quick. We're, we don't have really much to update right now. Um, get back to you next week. All right, that's pretty quick. Uh, we like it. Uh, Ramiro, anything from the Gateway side? Now you're a Gateway provider as well. Oh, one more hat. <laughs> uh, no, no news, I think. Uh, nothing to report from the Gateway. Okay, that's pretty quick. Um, all right, I think the next thing is maybe PNF. Uh, so I might give it over to, to Steve uh, and also take on the call. Uh, there's been some pretty good chats recently in the den uh, around some, some ideas around tokenomics, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of debate about that. So let's hear everyone's thoughts uh, and start of kicking off with the sort of kernels of these ideas. And uh, here's some sim PNF updates. Uh, so, Steve, please take it away. Yeah, there, yeah, there have been some very um, good, I think, thought provoking. Uh, discussions that are starting in the den which uh i personally find pretty encouraging on the the, the pnf side um and, and mike can add his thoughts uh, but i'm the last couple of weeks mostly what i've been trying to do is understand uh how everything works and has been working and operating and making um you know some 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 assessments there are some things that uh i didn't expect you know going into it and um will uh, personally be detailing that and and uh, like putting it out uh that are making progress slower than than i hoped and i, I think mike has shared some of those in in his update but uh we'll we'll get into uh like more more of the specific details uh for that it, and then thinking through uh kind of some some big decisions that uh like the discussion in the den sort of outlines like these these are like really big decisions they in the disc the discussions and thinking it, it's it's not new i mean you can go back to uh the forum for you know, literally years and, and see, uh, like historic thoughts on inflation and, and, uh, you know, the, uh, rewards and, you know, and how those, you know, how the economics are, are interdependent on the node running and, and, and vice versa. And, uh, the, you know, there's, I think everybody, at least most that I've talked to agree that there needs to be change, uh, somehow, uh, but it's not 
simple and um, like to, to a certain degree, like when you think through these things, it's like, I don't, I don't know um, if this uh, example is going to mean anything, but there's a, a game whack-a-mole. If you've heard of that game where you, they have like these little like animals that come up and you smash them down with a hammer. And when you smash one down, another one pops up somewhere else. It, it, it kind of feels like that when you like run it, like any one issue that you see, uh, you kind of go, oh, like here's a possible solution. And then with a little bit more thinking, you, you realize that um, solving that one issue uh, creates uh, a, a potential issue in, in some area, other area. And so there's been a lot of thought and in, in, in a lot of discussions uh, with with lots of people, um, you know, some like on this call, like DM, like direct messaging, and kind of going back and forth. But we're 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 really trying to make uh, responsible decisions. Um, at the same time, like there's no version of this that is probably going to be perfect. Uh, and I don't know if that's a segue into like a, a an open conversation here. If if anybody has any questions and. Uh, but update wise, I mean, that's like, that's the, the majority of what, what I've been doing. I think everybody knows Mike is, uh, is, uh, over in, in, uh, Asia right now and, and was in Seoul, uh, for events and, and working on, uh, getting support, uh, from investors and communities over there. And, uh, so lo lots of, lots of moving parts right now. And, um, you know, frankly, just way more to do than there, there are, resources and, and, and people to get it done. Uh, and so that that is also been something that we've been trying to navigate through, like, how do we actually get, um, you know, the, the, the right people in place. And to do that, you, you've kind of got to know, like, the main things that are going to be changed and the priority that they need to be changed uh, and, uh, and then align the right people behind it. So um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot to do. And uh, my um personally uh you know my my uh understanding of what the role was is uh is 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 was much different uh mike and i uh talked and i uh, uh was uh in, in neither of us knew but like thought it would be you know like a, a few hours a week perhaps uh, but really, this has been a full time deal, and uh, there's there's a lot of lot of moving parts. So we're we're working through that. Uh, maybe more um, info than anybody cared to hear, but uh, th that's that's uh, as transparent as I can be, I guess. Any um, any thoughts or questions? It sounds like you've been born as a community member there. <laughs> Come, come for the games. Uh, end up as a community member. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, you know, the, like under the best circumstances, like um, this, this stuff is like really hard, and there is no. I you see a lot of comments on the den, you know, about like, like we should do this, we should do that, and and they're all good and and super, like super appreciated, but it it's super complex. It, it's never been done before. There really isn't a roadmap, and, and I always kind of chuckle to myself when like I, I see people that assume there's 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 some like insider club behind the scenes master plan happening i'm like man if, if they really knew uh like it, it's so far from that i mean it's it's it, it's it's a lot of uh really well-meaning hard-working people with varying opinions of which way is the right way to go uh that are you know all trying to kind of figure it out uh, in, in, in real time because there isn't, frankly, a, like a master plan. It's not been done before. And uh, uh, that just, you know, that's just the truth. And, um, and, and so you, you kind of got to go at this stuff uh, with, um, with, with a degree of uh, imagination. <laughs> you know, I was going to say faith, but I'm, like, I'm going to say imagination. Uh, you, you sort of have to imagine what uh, what it could be in the future, you know, if some of these problems were solved. Uh, but the practical realities are like we don't have the answers to the problems that need to be solved, you know, in all cases. And so there's there's a little 
a little bit of, um, not a little bit, there's quite a bit of like trial and error that happens. I personally don't like, I, I, I don't know of any other way. And, uh, you know, I've been, uh, uh, close to, to big projects for 30 plus years. And it's just kind of how they all work. You, you just don't know what you don't know. And um, you get into it and you, you, you sort of learn and you, you, you push forward based on an idea and a vision and uh, yeah, try to do, try not to make the same mistakes twice, but it's, it's not reasonable to think that there won't be mistakes made along the way. But I won't take this into like a, a philosophical rant. That's my PNF uh, PNF update for now. But I'm happy to answer any questions or um, if anybody just wants to riff on on like uh, economics thoughts, um, cryptocorn. I, I I really did like uh, your proposal and like uh, for disclosure here. I, you know, I DM'd you and like I was curious if if you just kind of came up with that over coffee <laughs> because if so um you know you got me beat because i've spent that, like lots of lots of hours cycling through this and and i couldn't have riffed that off the the way that you did so my my hat's off to you yes thank you very kind i think it's um like you i got drawn in as a community member and uh, like many of the people in the school i'm sure we've all spent uh, far too much time that we all care to admit um, thinking over sort of pocket problems when you should be probably doing something else. Um, all right, this moment in time, I'm afraid I've got to head to the airport, so I'm going to leave you all in Steve's good hands, and I think we have the open floor, and I'll let you guys uh, chat without me, so uh, always say nice things. All right, guys, have a good one, and I'll speak to you guys uh, next week. Thanks again. Safe travels. <clears throat> uh, so anyone anyone brave enough to, to, to start the open? <laughs> yeah open conversation. I have a request that I wish I probably should have given at the beginning of the call rather than right now. Um, so I, Steve, I've talked to you about this and I talked to Mike about it a few times again, as, as most recently as late last night or this morning, I can't remember. Um, but uh, we're increasingly moving towards a place where um, one way or another, the found uh, Mike has agreed that uh, they that PNF will in there's a way to figure it out, but to fund for a period of time a set of chains um, to be avail made available on the network. It might be either through staking nodes with a specific provider and letting them keep the rewards, or through paying um, in stables for specific chains to be maintained. Um, and then kind of Fred and I have been riffing about this in the background for a long time. So I think we're, we're uh, uh, going to land. And I share this with the other gateway operators, some of which are on the call today, is there's a set of chains that will, you know, that are, in, are very healthy and they don't really need much love right now to retain their health. But there is a larger set of chains that have died or are close to dying um, and will continue to die. Um, if we don't do something about it. So the idea of where we are right now, and again, me saying this doesn't make it fact that it's going to happen, or if it does happen, doesn't mean it's going to happen this way. But the way we're thinking about it right now is a subset of chains will be, uh, will be funded by PNF in one way, shape, or form. All those chains will be a very beefy configuration. So probably a new chain ID or rehashing the existing archival chain, side, chain IDs. Um, and those uh, that will um, the the point of that is to enable gateways to feel comfortable to go back to their clientele, be it uh, in, in individual developers or you know in Grove's case reselling to other providers, to let them know like hey we do support you know chain you know esoteric chain A B C D E and F and maybe less esoteric chain you know X Y and Z in these super configurations that you've asked for. Um, feel free to bring back your traffic to us because of all the conversations I've had in the last month. And again, I've talked to 50, 60, maybe 70 different customers. Basically, all of them have said the same thing is Pocket Network is unstable. You know, when we send a request, there's no guarantee that we're going to get the same type of res uh, response um, if we send the same request type because chain IDs 
provide, you know, go to different nodes, uh, chain requ requests go to different nodes and each node sends sometimes a different response, either with a different latency or it may just be a bad node or who knows what happens. And a lot of this is due to how Pocket Network is currently set up and due to uh, either be it uh, programmatically or from an economic point of view. So the idea here is to kind of build a safety net um, so that demand can come in. Um, so this goes back to, you know, why has Grove's demand gone up or down at various periods of time? And that's because the network is just very unstable. And we've seen with Gandalf how it became even more unstable. Um, so um, I am not going to argue here to increase Gandalf. We're going to keep it as is. At least that's where we currently landed. Um, we may even continue going down. But we, before we do make any other changes, we do need to at least have some type of safety net built out so, such that um, high-quality high nodes are established across a large swath of the chains that have already been allow listed such that um, gateways can continue put you know going after customers and driving demand without kind of tarnishing the relationship between the gateway or the gateway and pocket network by proxy i'll stop there oh sorry and now the request is sorry the actual request to be saying this is i have a spreadsheet that i will share in a moment in chat it is uh globally viewable for the general public and I've given access to a few different node runners to begin editing it. But what I need is I basically need a few columns filled out stating like, hey, what is the actual configuration for running this node? And what is kind of the all in like raw cost for running the node without any margin built in for the actual node runner, just the actual cost to pay for the node. So we can figure out what it would cost to run a small amount of these nodes on a monthly basis for PNF. So we can figure out what, what to actually do. So I'll share the link now and then you guys can ask your questions. Um, I, th there's a few questions here coming up in the chat, uh, and and I'll, I'll I'll just try to go at them one at a time. Um, like uh, Zoolander and Miss Kitty, I think your questions are kind of kind of related. Um, but Zoolander said, like, what's PNF's actual plan? Um, you know, honestly, the plan is to validate the the right plan there there's multiple paths that uh we could go down um and it, it, none of those paths is perfect uh we the just the reality of of where we are right now is um we in some of this i'm i'm sure people will have a different opinion on so i'm going to say and, and i'm not even going to say this is like a pnf uh, opinion you know i don't i don't want to speak for 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 mike or uh, anybody else but my my opinion is right now there there is a uh, a, a a big oversupply problem we have 1.7 billion uh plus tokens out there of which more than a billion of them are liquid uh, meaning that you know they're tradable at at any point, um, and uh, we have inflation. You know that that that's compounding that. It, it's uh, it's my opinion that um, like that is going to in make it increasingly harder for us to to see price action. And I'm you know my, the 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 basis for that opinion. Um, and again, I know like different people will go at this differently, but I'll tell you how I arrived at it. Um, if if you go into uh, like Coin Market Cap or um, uh, um, Coin Gecko or, or any one of those, like right now, there's over fifteen thousand uh, tokens that are are tradable, and I just look at data across all the tokens and and just ask, you know, basically, you know, how many tokens have have, have performed this way and, and plug it in so uh, for example you know how many tokens that have a supply over 1.5 billion also have a price over uh three dollars which was pockets all-time high and um of fifteen thousand plus tokens um the answer is one uh tom and and so then you go like you know how similar are we to them in terms of like market cap and, and all of these other things and I just kind of use data to try to get um, what what I refer to as as like gut checks. Are are, are these changes? Do they seem realistic? Uh, and and I 
consider myself an, an optimist, but I, I would say like a pragmatic optimist. I, I can only be optimistic when I understand the logic that is uh, going to take us there. And, and so, uh, yeah, so I, I, I think my opinion like is that there's no evidence that shows a two plus year token, two plus year old token could uh, grow by over 2000% to get close to our last market cap um, with the supply it's got out there and, and the inflation. Uh, again, like that's my opinion. So that was a long answer to um, part of Zoolander's question, like what's the, what's the plan? Um, you know, I think the plan is to decide, you know, on the plan and, and, and we, we have ideas. It's, 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 you know, and, and, and these aren't ideas that are like secret, like these are ideas we've been sharing uh, it's just all of the plans are, uh, you know, are, are not perfect and uh, are going to require risk. Um, Miss Key, uh, no path for tier one relays seems to be gradually. De de uh, yeah, I, I can come back to um, the, the path for the tier ones uh, like that came up in the den too. Um, there, there isn't like a, a step by step that I'm aware of. and and um, uh, uh, Vocek uh, brought up in, in the uh, the den, like, you, you know, there was a, a lot of work that was done by, you know, uh, uh, X uh, PNF, but, but there isn't like a, like, just do these things, check these boxes and, and, and you're in. It, it doesn't work like that. I mean, um, so uh, the, the, the plan to get to the tier ones is to do the things that make the token, a token that tier ones would want. You know, it's 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 not, you know, it's 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 not something specific to 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 any tier one, and and you can think about that just logically. I think, like if if you think about what those exchanges, how they make money, what their business is, uh, they you know they get money each time somebody trades. So you could probably draw the conclusion that 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 volume is important to them, and they 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 probably don't want uh you know tokens that you know, don't show it's sustainable growth or at least price action that um, attracts people like over some period of time because, you know, people get rugged on their platforms and, you know, that is not a good look for, for them. Obviously, there's risk involved in, in this. And so that, that's going to happen. But uh, like all of these things, I, I've got to imagine are things that uh, especially the top, you know, tier one uh, exchanges are, are are looking at and and considering. Um, so I don't know if that answers that question, but um, Miss Kitty, did you look at old PNF uh, uh, tokenomics? Um, I did, and um, I, um, I I I you know I I I don't think it more inflation is is the answer at all. Like I I think that that is the um, the opposite of the answer, in in, in my opinion, and uh, like I, I know uh, that's been like proposed, and and I know that everything that we've done up to this point has has really depended on that. Um, it's a it's a super complex topic because today uh, there's our, our our economics and our our network are like interrelated, and they're they're both um, you know there's a lot of complexity on on, on both sides of them. But um, as it sits today, uh, the only way node runners, uh, you know, are incentivized is is through inflation, and those incentives aren't just incentives; they're like necessary to pay the bills, and um, that's a, a super tricky deal because you can look at it and go, well, um, you know, you know, decentralization has a cost. The, it's it's more expensive than centralization. And, I've said this in in the uh, the channels also, and you know what I mean by that is um, just like uh, objectively, like if, if let's for instance say uh, that one person can run between you know one and a thousand nodes, they can oversee between one and a thousand nodes. It's 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 more than that, but just for illustrative purposes, if you've got five different node runners, um, let's say each one of them is running two hundred nodes. Uh, you're still going to pay one person to oversee that. And so what could be done with one person is now being done with five people. And 
the economic impact of that is is something that impacts the network because we're creating tokens that are being used to pay for those people the rewards and so you you've got like in in that example five times the cost and that's just a really simple example i mean that doesn't even include like decisions that are made for for hardware do you use bare metal do you use hosted services and all that stuff so it's a complex uh, it's a complex problem and staying competitive price wise for getting demand when the actual costs are higher is tricky because you can't sell this for more unless people are willing to pay more for it and so w the way it's been working is we basically like subsidize the actual costs with inflation and uh, that's just the reality or at least the reality that i see happy to debate that with anybody or discuss it debate let me see what else we got here personal experience i suppose oh i'm not gonna be able to read that right now whoever posted that Uh, Zoolander, didn't Michael do the necessary tokenomics research prior to the proposal? Um, I don't know what that means. Like, I don't know what the necessary research is. Um, specifically, I, I think there's been a ton of research done by a, a, a lot of people. And uh, um, I would just, like, point you back to the forum. If you go back and look at some of the early... Uh, uh, pips and you know see some of the things that um like jack actually a, a lot of a, a lot of the like that that's the type of thing you want so hello i would i would take that dishwasher with us uh, i think we got uh i muted them it's fine oh okay gotcha thanks um yeah so so i don't know um like uh I, I think everybody has different like ideas and um, uh, like it, I, I wouldn't put this on Mike or anybody uh, like it, it's just a really complex problem. And it's one of those kinds of problems where you can get to a point where you think you have the answer, um, but somebody else will come along and, and, and provide you with an angle that you go, oh, I didn't think about that. And it just like changes everything. And uh, that is. Um, you know that's been happening for uh, a, a number of years now. You know, and, and the, the the problem isn't a new problem. I mean, Jack, uh, in the like the, the original um, economics papers, brings it up. Like, you know, Adam has spent a lot of time on it. Um, you know, there's been lots of lots of people that have thought deeply about this, and it, it's just it, it's a tricky problem because um, it's it, it it's going to affect somebody. On one side or another, and uh, and 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 that, that that's uh, like a hard, you know, a, a hard decision to make too. Uh, so, um, yeah, what else we got here? So, is the plan to reduce inflation? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, that that's the plan that I would be most in favor of personally. But um, the uh, uh, that's that's my opinion right now. Um, also, another pain during the deep development. Pocket Grove endpoints don't exist. Uh, that's going back and forth with Arthur. Um, any uh, any thoughts or uh, questions? Anybody else? I, I know lots of you have thought about this uh, a lot. So anybody that wants to chime in. I guess as the moderator, do I have to call people out on that? <laughs> Should I call on people like a school teacher? Yes. Somebody, come on. Miss Kitty, you got any thoughts?
Nobody. All right. Well, at least uh, Miss Kitty responded. Not any good ones. Um, and I'm not saying mine are good. I'm just like I'm just putting out like what I see are uh, like the, the the challenges. I mean, I, 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 you know, like the root challenge is um, the 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 token economics from sort of like an investor market standpoint are like coupled to the the requirements on the the network side i i really think that that is the like the the, the root problem and it's um exasperated by the fact that a decentralized network is just more expensive to, to run and um yeah i mean that that is like i i think the the, the root of it and uh there's you know all kinds of like dynamics at individual node runner levels and, and different incentive, like different personal motivations and, and reasons for making different decisions to do different things. And um, I uh, can tell you, like, having run nodes myself, like before, uh, uh, you know, I, I I got pocket early on, like because I was um, you know involved early and uh, used those to run nodes uh, very early on in the in the beginning. And I see Mark on here and other people that have been running nodes for a long time. It's uh, it, you know in the beginning it was it was really kind of hard and, and really expensive, but the the rewards were good, uh, and so it was worth spending a lot of time on it. Like you could you know you can make two hundred um, pocket a day. Uh, per node, you know, on, on, on some good days. And um, that was when the price was, you know, really decent too. So it was like, oh my gosh, I'll do this the rest of my life. It's beautiful. Um, but, but then prices came down and the, the costs did not. Uh, and then, uh, you know, um, that problem was sort of focused on by people in the community and, uh, I don't see I don't see Eric on here um pocket blade uh but um lean nodes came out and it was like a, a whole new deal so you went from like having to literally run a machine for every single node to being able to run quite literally hundreds of nodes on on one machine and so it it changed the underlying costs in a dramatic way uh and as a result of that um, I, I think there was, you know, a lot of new uh, natural, you know, outcomes. Uh, node runners could set up new nodes really, really easily and make it super inexpensive to bring on uh, clients. If you, and right now, when I talk about node runners, I, I mean the the people actually running the the, the infrastructure. Uh, there are is some confusion there because like a node runner could be somebody that owns pocket and is staking pocket. But I, I kind of think of those as, as investors more so than node runners, but those pocket holders that hand their pocket over to a node runner to stake. Uh, I, I think this was enabled in a like really uh, profitable way and, you know, in, in, in a lot easier way that um was an obvious opportunity that makes sense that everybody chased but it, it it creates new dynamics and um like the new dynamic uh for me as a node runner was you know as soon as i realized that there was other node runners that were able to do it better and cheaper because they had better economies of scale it was easy for me to go like i'm doing this for the rewards uh, so like if they can do it less why would I want to do it myself? Uh, and it really just comes down to like, what's your cost per reward? And what's the value of a reward on the open market? And, you know, it's, it just becomes simple economics. And so uh, if my cost per reward, even giving up a percentage in a rev share is less than what the cost per reward was, if I was doing it myself, it's, it's kind of a no brainer. So like uh, I was running like 700 nodes, but, but not all mine uh, for me and two, you know, two other friends. And uh, 
we just turned them all over to another node runner that was able to do a rev split. And then at that point, my, you know, my role was way different. Like at that point, I'm just an investor. And it kind of occurred to me that like, as an investor that like, this is beautiful. Like I have zero cost basis. I have zero time. I just get rewards every single day. Uh, and, um, that, you know, reflecting on it now, like that's a tricky deal because then once you get to that point, there's the question of, do I hold these rewards or do I sell the rewards on the open market? And, um, yeah, you know, I'm happy to like be transparent about what I decided to do uh, and why. I sold my rewards every single solitary day. And the reason that I did that is because it was costing me nothing for them. So anything I could sell them for was uh, you know, was a gain in 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 my like looking at it. And then I would use those rewards to to go buy other tokens, and I saw that as a way of diversifying risk. And I can't imagine that I'm the only investor that was thinking that way. And it makes sense um, from an individual investor standpoint, but it has ramifications when you're looking at the impact at like the the global level. And uh, I know I'm I'm kind of ranting here a little bit, but like all of these things are are interrelated, which Getting back to the point is why making changes uh, to the economics, you know, it's it's why it's so complex. There there isn't like a simple answer for this stuff, but it's um, but on the positive side, like I I, I said the other day, um, the the thing that I'm most encouraged about is, you know, how many mistakes we've made. It's it's real experience and i don't know any other way to to get it and it's experience that few other projects have and 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 i really think that gives us a competitive edge despite the what seems like chaos at a lot of a lot of points in the journey I'm going to read through this stuff here. Just kidding. When you mentioned lowering inflation, is there a target? I would love to target zero. But again, like it's not that simple. Is there any company currently building out the um, the vision as we see it? Um, I, I guess that would be a good. Um, I guess that would be a good uh, time, like maybe like being clear on the vision because I think that I think that's something that um, isn't always clear. Uh, my my version of the vision, which I believe is uh, the the same vision that that. Mike uh, share or I share his vision because he was the one that came up with it. I, I think and and the the early founders is more about um, building a network that's permissionless and and unstoppable. And uh, Olshansky, who's on the call right now, I I think wrote a really good paper this week uh, that um, I, I would encourage everybody to read. But it, it does a good job of of talking about like the difference between decentralization and uh and and permissionless and and Olshansky, not to um call you out but I, I i'd love for you to say that in your words because i think it was one of the best explanations that i've seen that describes what the difference between those two things Hey, Steve, uh, what specific part are you referring to? The kind of the things we were discussing offline or the blog post that I published? Yeah, yeah the, 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 the blog post, but like specifically, how, how, how would you de de define the difference between um, decentralization and uh, permissionless? 
uh, which which comes first, and 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 how are they related, and how are they? Third thing, I'll jump in. So uh, I don't know how many people here kind of have gone to my talks or watched the recordings, uh, but one thing that I reiterate pretty frequently is that no one cares about decentralization and. Decentralization for the sake of decentralization doesn't actually provide any utility to anyone either. Um, what it is, is permissionless, being permissionless and having an incentive is what's necessary. And decentralization is a byproduct of that. Imagine there's only one node in the entire world for Ethereum, one full node and nothing else. But let's say it works and it scales and it serves everyone's RPCs and it's not censorship resistant, and it's by a good actor, you don't need to decentralize it. Now, when things do get censorship resistant, when you do get censored, or when you do have scaling issues, or when things get expensive, or when that one node overcharges, that's where having an incentive and being permissionless really comes in. Um, so that's kind of on the decentralization piece and where kind of why permission permissionless less that's a hard word to say matters uh the big thing to note is and i don't know too much about uh the conversations happening but then but token price going up is very very different from the tech right i posted a blog post last weekend um you can think of the tech and token prices being completely decoupled from each other uh, having a good marketing person and uh, having a big community and really riling up a token price is what creates ROI, which is what I actually think most people here care about. Uh, but in the very long term, you know, not in the one or two year time frame, but in the five, 10, 50, 100 year time frame, if that's really why you're here, uh, that's where the tech begins to matter. So we'll. Happy to answer any questions on this. I can really dive deeper. But it's important to kind of understand even why also anyone would even want to buy the token or why we need a, uh, a protocol like Pocket. Right. So before I open up to the floor, kind of the two things are it's, um, and this is, I'm quoting Steve on this, it's insurance, right? Uh, a centralized provider will always be more efficient than a decentralized provider and will always be cheaper. But, you know, if Infura goes down, they send their polygon traffic to us. If some other provider goes down, they send their traffic to us because we are decentralized, because we have a heterogeneous network, because we have a heterogeneous set of node providers, right? So you pay a premium on insurance in the same way that you pay a premium uh, for your car insurance, for your house insurance, for your health insurance. Uh, there's also the long tail of esoteric services, right? Pocket's never going to be the best place to get your inference, LLM inference for Llama 3, 405B. Like, that's just not going to be the case. But, you know, that model that that one scientist is going to build that no one else wants to run, you go to Pocket for it. And then there's going to be 1 million other models just like that. Um, so those are kind of like where my head's at, where I'm thinking. Um, but again, this strategy and this thinking and this tech and this vision, it's completely decoupled from the token price, right? Which is like very, very critical for people to understand. And um, I'm going to just pause there for now. Hopefully that provides some, some insight, uh, at least as, uh, with regard to how I've been thinking about things. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. I, I want to um, on on it. it sh I, I want to say, like, from my perspective, it should be decoupled, but but today it's not um, because the token price is um, what's allowing us to to offer the the service at a competitive price. Uh, when the reality is that the, the the costs are not the same. Like, you can provide this service objectively a lot cheaper when it's centralized than you can uh, when it's decentralized. So when you think about that in terms of like um, paying customers, 
you, you've got to you've got to ask what like is the value of decentralization um, does it exceed the the costs of decentralization? And the answer right now is no. Like objectively, it's no. Like there 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 isn't enough evidence in terms of um, like people stepping up in 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 any kind of quantity that you could point to to say that uh buyers of this service are willing to to pay a premium uh because it's decentralized and, and that premium exceeds the cost of providing the de decentralization and i i use that uh the analogy um uh insurance uh because i i think it is really similar it's like nobody wants to buy insurance uh, and if if insurance wasn't required by uh, like the government, you know, like you you to get your driver's license or to drive your car, you have to have insurance. I would imagine that there would be a lot of people without insurance because insurance is one of those things that, like logically, you know, um, like yeah, I should have this, but really, it doesn't provide any value uh, until you have an accident, and so unless like most of our buyers have had a accident that could have been addressed with decentralization my my assumption is that their uh willingness to uh to to, to pay a premium is, is is probably limited and and i think um you know i would love to see an analog that suggests otherwise but i haven't found one my, myself so so today the 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 point i wanted to make on on daniel uh comment is, is they are they are coupled because it's the token price that is allowing us to um, obfuscate the the actual costs and without that uh, we would be centralized and uh, Miss Kitty's point like inflation to zero would be a tough sell for commercial node runners and calling out um, like Jeff, uh, like Q Spider and uh, Breezy and uh, Stake Nodes and Mark, and and yeah, I get this because I have run nodes. Like I, you know, I get it. The but if, like when you zoom out, it's it, it 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 doesn't cause problems for everybody. It causes problems for the people that are dependent on pocket to pay for those costs. And there are node runners in the in, in the ecosystem. That, that don't depend on pocket, they've got additional. So to them, like putting pocket nodes on is not an is not an additional cost. It's a utilization of additional capacity, which means that anything that they sell the rewards for is incremental or that they have the luxury of not selling and, and, and they can, you know, wait for the uh, the odds or the the, the possible chances of uh, better upsides when the token price reverses and and that's what makes this so tricky because like you can't take you can't take away from like the like the the, the people that have really built most of this you know the, like the node runners that have been around for a while figuring this out but at the same time it just doesn't change economics and 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 what's happening and there is sort of like a the invisible hand, if you will, if anybody that's a, like an economics buff, that, that, that's sort of driving things in directions that like, are, are naturally uh, occurring, I guess. Um, anyway, uh, that was kind of a rant. Hey, Mark, or any like uh, anybody that's been like node running hands on for a while, care to comment or like or or provide thoughts? Or breezy, I see you coming off mute. Yeah, no, I was, um, I think you uh, mentioned something and you say you was going to comment on it. I was waiting to hear your, your point on that. Uh, let me see. Of course, beside uh, stick notes not being enough. Uh, maybe like one, Wh two, which, three, which one? Oh, 
for I will try to provide some thoughts on that in a minute. That's what you wrote. Oh, you know what? I, I I'm I'm sorry. I I was um I I tried to hit reply on Ramiro's and uh, yours was next, and I think I. Oh. Uh, I, I think I said that to the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, my apologies, but I was going to comment on uh, Romero. Uh, he said that you, you mentioned that there are too many liquid tokens. Um, have you thought about uh, what to do with them? Converting all of them into service nodes uh, seems difficult um, due to liquidation rewards. I mean, yeah, this is super tricky because like, uh, what, what what's happening right now is, like I mentioned, uh, my you know, personal story, like once my no my pocket was staked with another node runner, I was just getting rewards. Um, and, you know, early on, I was compounding those. But then like, when I got to a point where I'm like, why compound, I should just sell. Uh, and then I can diversify my risk by buying other tokens. Um, you, you start doing that. But then as the price comes down, and, and volume comes down, it becomes increasingly harder to sell. So it's not that you're selling because it's not that you're not selling because you're waiting for the price to go up. It, it's you're not selling because there's not enough volume to to sell, and if you try to sell too much, it tanks the price. Uh, so um, you know, I know of many people that are like backing off selling, um, but not really because they don't want to sell. Um, but because you know they 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 don't want to affect the price, the the impact that this has is that you've got this sort of invisible sell wall that you can't see until volume goes up, and then it comes alive. And when it comes alive, there's all of a sudden like magically tons of selling happening. Um, but but that is like it's good for for for. You know, it's it's good because people can get liquidity. So, like, that, that's not a bad thing. Um, but but what makes it challenging is uh, it it prevents like like natural climb on the price uh, because the like the price will climb. Uh, and I use when I try to ex like explain this, it's it's like markets in general are like if you look over a timeline, they're 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 either going up or down, but they don't go straight up or straight down. Like they go two steps forward and one step back or two steps back and one step forward. Um, in the first case, you're you're climbing up over some timeline. In the second case, you're climbing down over some timeline. And so if you zoom out and go like, are we taking two steps forward and one step back or two steps back and one step forward, uh, y you can start going, all right, like let's play this out another 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. And if you're taking two steps back and one step forward, uh, normally what will happen is every time you get close to the last high, uh, people will sell because it, it, they, they see it as a, a zero-sum game uh, when it should be like a competitive strategy game where the objective is that the game never ends. Uh, and you know sometimes you're leading and sometimes you're 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 not but like everybody is incentivized to want to keep the game going but if you think like oh i better sell before everybody else starts selling um it it, it creates that like two steps back one step forward where every high local high is a little bit lower than the last local high and um you know, lows can bounce off the like the the very floor, which could be just like above the uh, the, the the price that the very minimum like node runner could afford to to stay going. Uh, but it, it it's it's a it's a problem, uh, Romero. So like I think um, um, crypto corn, what he posted on the den, like a, you know, there's there's you know, possible, like maybe you do uh, like a split, a backward split, like he suggested, where the supply is uh, like a four to one. So there's not as many tokens out there, but everybody is like pro proportionally changed. And, and the bet on something like that would be that because the, the supply has been reduced, 
um, the price would increase because of you know the law of supply and demands. But it, but it's not a guarantee in this case because uh, you you have to go like where does the demand come like why is there demand and there's really just like two answers to that one is there's speculative demand which is people that are buying the token thinking that the token will go up over you know some timeline and there's utility demand like people that that need the token to stake but the, the utility demand is is really not enough to move the needle uh right now so it, it it's mostly a bet on uh speculative demand um so the sh long answer to your question ramiro is i don't know or like i'm not sure like how we how we get you know get that uh you you could split you could just try to push through um to like give all of the people that are holding liquidity by trying to drive demand um and, and uh, that's what like uh, Mike and Jinx have been doing, like trying to get, you know, new new demand open, you know, open up and excited, uh, and and you know, but but it's still like uh, like a big question mark. Yeah, I just want to jump in uh, with some other thoughts that I I think these are conversation uh, questions I've had in the past with regards to Canon and kind of what impact that'll have, why it's even necessary. So firstly, uh, if you haven't read the alpha testament number three announcement on uh, Grove's Medium page, I uh, highly recommend you go and check that out. Uh, I won't be reiterating that here. But what I will say is, if you assume that kind of ca the Canon launch will have impact on the token price, that's, again, I think those are decoupled and we can't really have any expectations there. If we're thinking about the long term of why we need Canon for a higher token price, it's for permissionless demand and services, right? I mentioned backups as one source of demand. Another one is the developers willing to pay a payment for esoteric services that aren't available elsewhere, right? So once the protocol can support any service and imagine a pretty UI that lets anybody add any service, right? That creates an avenue for adding services, adding demand for these esoteric services, creating buy pressure for anyone who actually wants to access them. This is like an extremely oversimplified perspective of what the next five to 10 years would look like, but that's kind of the goal. And one of the goals and one of the angles of the end vision um, which I just want to throw in because uh, I know it's a question I've gotten often in the past. Hey, hey Romero, I, I, your comment on the um, chat, would you be willing to uh, talk about that? Because I think that is like a, a really good uh, uh, analogy, but but like uh, good good analog for the yeah the what we yes. do with the, Can you the, hear me? the token. Yes. Well, today in the chat they talk about like removing zeros from the coin, like maybe one thousand to one. When we move to Shannon, uh, like changing the token denomination, I mean that. That makes no sense. I, I didn't understand what CryptoCorn meant what, by one one fourth of anything. I, I he was referring to making one new pocket equals to four old pockets. It, it makes no sense. It, it only changes the the number, but it doesn't really affect anything else. I mean, it's it's a virtual coin. We can go up to micro pockets if we want. Uh, we can add or remove all the zeros that we want. And it will not change the problem that we have that it's inflow and outflow of money from our economy. So I, I think that's silly. So it just, it, it's, it's, it's worthless to analyze it any further, I think. 
Yeah, I, I, I see your, um, your, your point there. Uh, but there is, uh, like there is some relevance when you are thinking about thinking about it within the context of other tokens. Um, so, so kind of back to like the, the way that I go at this stuff is I, I, I think about the changes that could be made and I compare um, those parameters to all other tokens and, 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 and just see like, and I know, and you and I went back and forth DM through this. Um, like, I, I know it's not literally a statistical probability because you can't get an actual statistical probability on a case like this, but you, but you can use it as a, like a, 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 a statistical gut check. So if, like I say, um, you know, how many tokens have a supply of, of 3 billion and a token price of, you know, um, $3 uh, out of 15,000 of them um, that are also X number of years yeah. old? Like, you know, like you could say it's just never been done before. Uh, and, and there's been 15,000 plus other you know, tokens out there. So does that mean the odds are zero and 15,000? Not really, because you, you always have statistical outliers, but it, it's probably something worth thinking about. Yeah, but I don't like, if you are targeting um, those indicators, the ones that you found in, in CoinMarketCap or CoinGeek or, or anything else, yeah, you can try to optimize or to gain what investors are looking into from tokens. I mean, you, you can try to fool the stupid ones that are only filling uh, cells in an Excel with some random numbers thrown, like total volume of coins and price per coin and, and things like that. Yeah, if we know which are the metrics that they are using to invest. Yeah, we can try to optimize for that and bring them in, but it, it's not serious. It's, it's, it's not bringing any value. It's not bringing any stability to the protocol. I mean, yeah, you could try to do that, but in the end, you will end up with the same problem. Maybe a little more money that will went away from the protocol as, as fast as it will come. I don't know. Uh, I'm a little bit yeah. more conservative in my economic view. I think. No, I, I think you're right. I think like the what what you're saying, if I understand it right, is, is is fundamentally there still needs to be value that people are willing to pay for, and like that value is 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 ultimately like what matters. Um, and and whether you change the supply or the price, uh, it, it really. Like it, it, it's it, it's it's sort of not the real deal, and and if I'm saying something that you didn't didn't mean, let me know. Um, but there is um, we we don't know for sure uh, like what this looks like, but like there's laws of supply and demand. Um, they're not theories of supply and demand, uh, or at least uh, you know we we believe they're laws up to this point, and so you 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 can take some of those ideas and apply them like uh for example when when pocket was launched uh there was only like 1500 other tokens i think uh some, somewhere in there and, and and this i'm i'm going off the top of my head that this you could you, you know real data would be better um but i don't have that in front of me right now uh but but today there's 15000 plus uh and i've looked at that recently um so you you could back off and say okay well like how how big has the overall market cap grown, and and that's like the you know total supply of all tokens and and and, and price, and 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 then you could say like if if you divided that by the number of tokens, like has the average market cap per token gone up or down, um, and and that could perhaps provide some insights onto like into like how viable it is to think that we're going to e exceed sort of what the market is saying is, is 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 possible at a macro level and i know it's not 
that simple, but um, I, I, I do think it's worth looking at and, and considering, and, and we're over time now too, so I want to keep ranting. Um, anybody else have any other thoughts? I, I, like, and, and uh, Romero, please tell me if if I said something that wasn't what you you meant. Like, because uh, I tried to um, replay what I thought I heard you say, but I want to make sure that I didn't replay it, 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 it the yeah, way that I, I thought it should. The main idea. Uh, so, but I mean, it, it's a very very long topic, and we are over time right now. So, uh, but you got the idea. Yeah, so we're um, yeah we're about ten after, and and my uh, my fault for uh, not not being able to manage this as well as uh, Jenks or Crypto Corn, but um, uh, let's let's call it a day there. Um, uh, happy to to try to uh, continue the conversation in the den or anywhere else if um, people want to uh, uh, keep it going. But I appreciate everybody uh, taking the time out to to, to chat and all of the thought that everybody is putting into trying to figure these things out and the work that's going on. Really, really do appreciate it. So thanks all.